Some time ago, Minecraft had a cave update to help with boring underground features, and it's something I'd love to see added to Terraria as well. So that's what we're doing today. In this video, I will be making a cave update for Terraria, enhancing world generation to help with annoying parts of the early game and hopefully improve its exploration aspects. These mods take a long time to make, so if you do enjoy them, please consider showing your appreciation to the video. Thank you. Okay, so what makes the Terraria early game boring to a lot of players is how slow everything is. You know that feeling when switching from an endgame character to a brand new one? Yeah. Not only is the character slow, but so are the tools, and digging with a copper pickaxe takes ages. This is the first thing I'm gonna change, not by improving the speed at which blocks are broken, but by removing the need to break blocks in the first place. I added new cave types to the game, the first of which being the chasm. It helps going straight down, replacing the need to make vertical tunnels to reach deeper caves and its jagged edges make it really easy to descend without taking too much risk. Am I gonna die if I drop down? I like these like wall things too, this makes it a lot easier to get down. Chasms are fairly common and will usually appear where you'd need one to be. Next up are rifts. These ones are diamond shaped and will reach down diagonally in a the direction. They have smooth edges and I really enjoy exploring them, like how the ceiling gets further away and they often have a pool of liquid at their end. Oh my gosh, it's just... It's just a giant... <laughs> it is the rift! Once again, they are a great way of descending into lower caves and their shape makes it really easy to get rid of enemies on the path. Finally, chambers will appear. These ones are fairly rare and have a very high ceiling. Their flat grounds means a lot of pot and statues spawn here, but most importantly they make for great areas to build underground villages, mob farms, or even arenas without spending ages mining blocks. That's a cool... That's a cool generation idea though, like, having big cave. I, I would've really liked that in my Blood Moon playthrough. I had to mine out and, like, excavate a huge area so I could build a house for, like, three NPCs. All the caves are generated by drawing a line on the map, then removing blocks along it giving them the shape I want. The lines are randomly rotated, and every cave is completely unique while keeping their own features. In the end, this is what your map looks like. You can see how easier it is to navigate around without having to dig quite as much. Platforms are also added by the mod and will generate everywhere. There are already a lot of hints in the game that someone explored these caverns before us, with background tiles such as this one, underground cabins, or even skeletons themselves, so platforms aren't out of the question. There are also a lot of fun to stumble upon, and a lot of statues, pots, and underground goodies spawn on them all the time. Also, like, having statues and stuff spawn in here, is that... Did you make the statues and stuff, like, spawn here, or is that just, uh, like, something that happens? This works because everything this mod adds so far happens very early in the map generation process, meaning a lot of things such as caves moving, pots being placed, or even biomes like the marble, granite, and mushroom ones haven't appeared yet, which makes the mod compatible with basically anything, as structures from other mods will simply be generated on top of mine. Speaking of, I heavily recommend pairing this mod with my Orchid Mineshaft mod for the full experience, as the new structures it generates fit perfectly in the new caves. It also has some cool and balanced early game items for you to discover, such as an early game light pet, an escape grappling hood that only shoots upwards, and an accessory that reduces trap damage so boulders do not watch you anymore. This wouldn't be a cave update without traps. Don't tell me you don't love being sent back to spawn because you didn't see a 2 pixels pressure plate on the ground. I want my traps to actually be fair, and give the player more than enough time to react when activating them. Not only that, but I also want them to be useful outside of caves, and something the player can look for when building. Introducing the pressure trap. It releases a burst of pressure when triggered, shooting the player upwards. Activating one can easily be survived, as landing on the trap again will send you back up, giving you plenty of time to calculate your landing, or place a cobweb to avoid fall damage. Pressure trap. This is just like a jump pad now, right? Basically, yeah. That's crazy cool! It is gonna kill me if I land in anywhere but the water, though! It can be picked up and hammered to change the direction of the blast, allowing you to create cool contraptions such as easy elevators in your builds. You can also place them to move around more easily in your world. Or this. NPCs can also be pushed by the pressure, which makes some interesting defense mechanisms, I suppose. Pressure traps generate in rooms with high ceilings, and you'll often find them in chambers or rifts added by the mods. No, help! That's- these are fucking pressure pads are actually like the- this is probably like my favorite trap. The second trap added by the mod is the gravity trap. This one is a lot less forgiving, but also a lot less common. When stepped on, it releases a pulse sending the player upwards, and doesn't let go until they manage to stop themselves or hit the ceiling. Not only do you have to survive the way up, you also have to land safely afterwards. Uh-oh. Uh. Good luck. <laughs> oh, no! What the fuck? I survived! 
Say what you want, this is still more counterplay than explosive traps. They spawn deeper than their pressure trap counterparts, and unlike them will sometimes appear in the underworld, making it a good way to find some despite their rarity. Everything in the mod can be configured, meaning you can increase the number of special caves in your world, disable them entirely and... Do not enable this option. I, I know you saw it. Do not enable it. You've been warned. Finally, I wanted to add a couple items to the mod, specifically to the marble, granite and mushroom biome chest, which in my opinion should have a little something more. I rarely add accessories to my projects, so here we go. The mushroom chest item is the mushroom ring. It makes it so the first enemy slain every 10 seconds releases a healing orb that can be picked up for 5 seconds before it disappears. Risk of rain? Risk of rain? Oh my gosh, wait, that actually is! That's such a sick idea, what? They hum towards the player, so the timer shouldn't be an issue unless running away or attacking from a long range. It's a solid early game accessory that can be held onto for a long time and would definitely help with exploration. The marble chest item is the marble stiletto, which creates an aura around the player when enemies are nearby. Every enemy will take a flat 3 bonus damage every time they are hit, obviously making it very good with melee weapons, but it can also be used with items such as the mini shark in close range for massive added damage. You may have noticed those accessories behave a lot like Rhizophrine 2 items, namely the monster tooth and the focus crystal, in which case you'd be absolutely right. <coughs> Continuing, the granite chest item is the crop. Uh, I, I mean the granite emblem. Damage dealt to enemies above 90% health is increased by 75%, making it especially good when used with slow weapons like the musket or flails. This is very useful when exploring since you'll meet a lot of enemies and not so much during boss fights because there's fortunately no raid gunner class in Terraria. No, I will not make a raid gunner class in Terraria. Since I know these items could be missing from some worlds, I added them to the loot pool when fishing in those special biomes. This is a detail, but at least anyone can get them. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please consider helping out the channel by subscribing, this means more videos in the future. As always, the mod is available on the mod browser, there's a link to it in the description. I don't know exactly what it is that gives me that impression, but there's stuff going on here. There's something malicious brewing, Vervine. There's something malicious about these caves.